Alright, so chapter 4 was closed systems. Uh, chapter 5 is open systems. So uh, let's talk about the mass and energy of, we'll call them control volumes, because sometimes with open systems, it's not like it's a tank. Uh, sometimes they don't have uh, rigid, real defined boundaries. So we call a control volume something that we're setting the boundaries, but stuff could be coming in and out of it. Uh, so the, this is open systems. All right, and so we need to really be thinking about the mass. We have been talking about energy, conservation of energy, conservation of energy all semester. We're still going to talk about conservation of energy, but now that we have open systems, mass is conserved. Mass is still conserved. Mass is always conserved, except uh, E equals MC squared. We definitely will not have to worry about that. This will definitely be negligible, except for nuclear reactions and we will not have anything like that so mass will be conserved so for open systems we need to keep track of that mass entering and exiting the control volume so we might want to know hey, how much mass is entering and exiting um, how much mass is coming in the inlet what's the mass flow rate of the inlet What's the mass flow rate of the outlet? Uh, we've talked a little bit about mass flow rate. Mass flow rate is mass divided by time. Um, if we have a, um, let's think about a circular, let's think about a cylinder. Let's, let's think about a tube. If we have a circular inlet or outlet, uh, then the mass flowing through here, uh, maybe it's uniform. It probably isn't really uniform, um, but we could find the average velocity, right? We could find the average velocity. V average uh, would technically be something like 1 over the cross-sectional area times the normal velocity uh, integrated it over that cross-sectional area. We won't have to do that, um, but if we know the average velocity of the inland outlet, then the mass flow rate will be rho V A uh, technically, it might be right the integral of rho v normal dA, you know, v, the velocity that is perpendicular to the cross-sectional area. Uh, again, we're probably not going to uh, need to do that. So let's say m dot is rho v a, where rho is the density of the fluid. V is the velocity of the fluid. This would be the average velocity of the fluid. This would be the velocity normal to the cross-sectional area, which just means, you know, the velocity in the, dire in the direction of the pipe or the inlet. And A is the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area. <clears throat> now, don't get it confused with the volumetric flow rate, how much volume uh, we've got per unit time. Uh, so maybe if we want volume or, or we know volume, volumetric flow rate uh, is V times area where, let's say, this is volumetric flow rate. I think that's obvious. Uh, this is velocity. But again, it's really the normal velocity in the direction that, that it is flowing. And A is a cross-sectional area. Uh, technically this, you know, if this is not constant, it's really V normal dA as A goes from, uh, the, the, the whole cross-sectional area. Units are helpful. I've, I've already had right here. Units are helpful. Right. If, if we've got kilograms per second, right, kilograms per second. That's volumetric flow rate, right? That is m dot. If we've got something like meters cubed per second, that's v dot. That's volumetric flow rate. All right, and then uh, to kind of switch between the two, maybe you're given volumetric flow rate, but you really want uh, mass flow rate. Mass flow rate equals rho v dot. And again, the units would have given that away to you. Uh, here's one more. Uh, how about V dot over specific volume? M dot is also V dot over specific volume. 
that one I feel like we've used before. Okay, so anyway, there's some ways to calculate the mass flow rate. Uh, now, we've got two equations, the energy in and out, conservation of energy, but also the conservation of mass. It's almost like a new equation, conservation of mass equation. So we can talk, think about all the mass going in minus all the mass going out equals a change in mass. Or in this one, this is the mass rates, right? That dot is the per unit time. This is the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate out equals the change in mass over time. That dot is divided by time. So uh, this way, I would kind of think about this and write this. All the rho VAs of the inlets minus all the rho VAs of the outlets equals the change in mass over change in time. Uh, if we were doing some integrals and derivatives, this would like be dm dt, like the derivative of m with respect to time. Uh, but most of our, we're going to be discrete change in mass and what's the change in time. All right, so we've got the inlets positive going in, the outlets uh, negative going out. That's how I do everything. I, everything in is positive, everything out is negative. Okay, so for steady flow processes, so first we're going to look at a special type of process, and that's a steady flow process. Steady flow meaning the mass in the control volume is constant. So it's not filling up with mass. You know, we, we sometimes I think of inlets like a hose that's filling up a bucket. All right, that would not be a steady flow process. Steady flow processes are not collecting more and more and more and more mass. Whatever mass it started with, that's the mass that it ended with. If the mass is constant in the control volume, then that right-hand side of our equation, delta m dt or dm dt is zero. And if the right-hand side of our equation is zero, then I'm just going to take this and add it to the other side of our equation. So it's really just telling me that all the inlets equals all the outlets. So our conservation of mass becomes that equation right there. The rho VA of the inlet plus rho VA of this inlet plus rho VA of this inlet equals rho VA of the outlet, rho VA of the outlet. Right? So, and that makes sense. For steady flow devices that aren't collecting any mass, mass is not changing, all the mass going in equals all the mass going out. That's, that's what it says, right? All the mass going in equals all the mass going out. If there's a single inlet outlet, then, then there's no summation. You know, it's just rho VA inlet. You know, and I, I really should say in, 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 out, out, out. Now, how about steady flow, single inlet outlet, and incompressible fluid? Incompressible, uh, like a liquid... All right, not a gas, um, but if it's a liquid, and if we can assume that the the rho is constant, then the VA of the inlet equals the VA of the outlet. Right, the inlet, inlet, outlet, outlet. Uh, you could you could put those on your formula sheet. You can memorize those, or or you could just well, or you could just start right here every time. Uh, and then, oh, it's steady flow. This goes to zero. Oh, I, it's got the same row going in and row going out. Uh, there's only one, so there's no summation. So you see how we could simplify it. You know, we could write lots of different equations. Or we can kind of start up here at, at our main one and simplify it as much as we can. Okay, I think we're ready to... So th this, is just, this is just conservation of mass. This is just conservation of mass. Um, we, we still are going to do conservation of energy, uh, but first let's kind of look at and, and calculate and think about conservation of mass uh, for this next problem, okay?